So in our previous uh, video, we were looking at acceleration and velocity separately. Uh, basically looking at um, finding acceleration from changes in velocity or velocity from changes in, uh, in, in where you are basically, in, from, from displacements. Um, now we're going to deal with a special set of equations uh, that basically um, are based on, on a couple of simple uh, assumptions. The first one is that we're going to assume for all of this, um, for all all of these equations, that your acceleration uh, is constant. All right. So again, we're not doing any uh, um, any equations uh, or any any problems where acceleration uh, where the the acceleration is changing, where the magnitude of the acceleration is changing. Um, this is a pretty good assumption under most cases. Um, and, and again, it, it, it's, it simplifies things quite a bit in what we can do. The other thing that we're going to assume that you're going to see kind of in, in the solutions is that we're assuming that um, our initial time, our t0, is just equal to 0 seconds. So we're setting t0 equal to 0. You can kind of choose any time as t0 as, as your initial time. And so uh, it turns out that this, this particular choice uh, makes for a pretty nice, um, it make, makes your equations basically work out nice, or basically you get rid of the t0 part of your equation. Um, so those are kind of the assumptions that are going to go into everything from here on out. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a bunch of equations that we're going to use in the future to basically solve uh, a series of problems, and then I'll do some examples in a different video. Um, the first equation is x is equal to x0 plus v average t. All right, it turns out this is actually just a rewriting of the equation um, v average is equal to x minus x0 divided by t, uh, which we've seen before. Uh, the only difference is before we were just as we were assuming that the the velocity uh, was constant. All right, now our our velocity isn't constant. Our acceleration is constant. But if you do have acceleration, it by definition means that your velocity is changing. Um, this is just saying that uh, if you have some average velocity that you can find, uh, th that's going to just be equal to x minus x zero divided by t. Or the other way to write it is that the position that you're at is just going to equal uh, wherever you started plus the, your average velocity times the amount of time that you've been at that velocity. Um, and again, this is just a new equation kind of looking, uh, or it's not even a new equation, it's an old equation basically rearranged in a, a slightly more useful form. One thing you may ask that we haven't done up until now is, well, how do you actually find V average especially if the uh, if if the your velocity is changing with time it turns out we have a new equation which uh, tells us that which is that v average is just equal to uh, the initial velocity basically how fast you're going at time equals zero at your at your t zero um, plus your velocity at the end or at the point that you're interested in basically your final velocity um, and then you divide by two Okay, and so that'll give us some idea about how to calculate the average velocity, which again will go into this equation if we ever need to use it. A lot of you are going to find that you're going to get the wrong answer by a factor of two. A lot of times that's because uh, you end up putting um, the final velocity into the equation rather than the average velocity. Um, so just keep track of that, that um, there are times when we're talking about the, the initial velocity, and there are times when we're talking about the final velocity. I just want to point out that all of these are um, in, in all cases velocity is a vector. Um, it just the reason I haven't been writing it is that it's it's just a little bit um, it's a little busy actually to, to get to, to write all that in. So I'm gonna just get rid of them for now, with the understanding that um, that those are that the velocity is always a vector. Okay. Um, Finally, uh, you have um, the, uh, the something connected. Again, remember we were looking at velocity and how it relates to acceleration. Um, we can write the velocity is equal to v0 plus at, where now that th these aren't average velocities. That, again, is your beginning velocity. That v is the final velocity of velocity at the time that you're interested in. And again, this just comes from uh, the equation we saw before that says that a is equal to v minus v0 divided by t. Um, you notice that the a doesn't have an average over it. Uh, part of the reason the a doesn't have an average over it is because we've already said before that we're assuming that our acceleration is constant. So if acceleration is constant, 
um, then a, uh, a average is just a, so the a is staying the same all the time. And again, acceleration is also a vector. We're just dealing in one dimension, so again, I'm just going to um, leave the vector signs off for now with the understanding that uh, once we get to two dimensions, we are going to have to think about uh, acceleration as a, and, and velocity as vectors. Finally, if you combine these two equations together and do some solving, it turns out you can get, so there's our one, there's our two, you can get a, a fourth uh, useful equation which says that x is equal to x0 um, plus v0 t plus one half a t squared. This basically, so again, in the first equation you have a relationship between x and v and time. In the second equation you just have a, a relationship between velocities, the various velocities. In the third equation you have a relationship between the velo velocities and acceleration in time. In this one we're relating our position, x, to our acceleration and we also need an initial velocity in there to get that as well. And so that's kind of a, a useful equation that basically links those two. Finally, uh, there's a fifth one which is basically also putting these other equations together which is v squared is equal to v0 uh, squared plus 2a x minus x0. Um, and again, this one now relates velocity and acceleration and uh, displacement. But you notice there's no time in it, so we don't need to know the time uh, to actually get this answer. Um, this looks like a lot of equations, it can be really daunting at times, but I'll show you in the, in the next video. Basically what we do with these equations, we basically, anytime we want to solve one of these uh, 1D motion uh, um, problems, we just look at the variables we have and we just find the equation that basically has the variables that we need. Uh, so um, we find basically an equation that has all the variables we need and we use that to solve the final problem. So uh, n normally very quickly you'll eliminate everything except for the one that, that you actually need to get. It's also important to point out that often in problems there are actually two or three different ways of actually solving the problem. So don't be too worried if you're doing something different than your friend or whatever. Um, there are often many different ways to solve these problems because there are so many different equations that are largely um, giving us the same information. Okay, I hope that was useful and uh, um, go and watch the next video where you see how this actually works in practice.